Hey everyone. So in our last video, we gave a bit of an overview of, of this diagram. I've moved a few things around so we can see over here on the left, we have our physical hardware, so our ESXi hosts today. One of the things that I'm pondering, thinking about is obviously we don't have a lot of resources. So would something like Proxmox be maybe a better alternative? We have our, our storage, our NAS devices. We have a couple of virtual machines. We have a virtual center, which again is where our resources are being taken. For the most part, we have our Veeam back and replication server that is backing up these VMs. We have a mission critical Minecraft server for my for my son. And then we have this DevOps management. And that's where we're going to be working today. We're going to get Docker installed. We're going to get Rancher installed and hopefully Portainer as well. I'm still up in the air as to whether we put HashiCorp Vault here, asking a few people as to where where is best to put that. And the idea is, and we won't get it to this in this video, but... I want to start deploying my Kubernetes cluster as virtual machines on this host. I then want to take advantage of vSphere CSI and all of that good stuff, but that's for a, another day. So today, what I want to do is get Docker installed, get Rancher installed, and hopefully Portainer as well. So the first things first is that I've SSH'd into my DevOps management server, and hopefully, I haven't checked, but there is no Docker installed. So as you can see here, let me move this to this side and then we're going to put this in here. Um, I'm not going to go through it. There's millions of videos around what Docker is, what the Docker engine allows us to do. Um, what we want to do is we want to install Docker on on our Ubuntu machine. Okay, so to get started, Docker engine, make sure you meet the prerequisites. Yeah, let's assume that we do. Um, again, it's a lab environment. Uninstall old versions, run the following to uninstall. Yeah, that might report that you have more images, containers, installation methods. Don't become bundled with Docker desktop. I don't really want Docker desktop. Um, install using the apt repository so let's do that let's use sudo apt get update and throw this in there let's throw a password that way hopefully this works and then we're going to install docker hyphen ce and we'll confirm whether it's running or not Pretty much every time I've installed Docker though, this bit's fine. This bit, I get an error around sockets. So let's see what happens. Let's say that should be all done. So let's see if we can install it. Yep, 411 meg. Okay. Should not have to speed this part of the video up. Should be really quite timely. Okay. So once we've done that, we're going to update. We don't need to do this. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that. So, although I know what is going to happen. Here we go. So we'll get to that shortly. Um, so if you look here, we've, we're installing docker-ce, we're in, installing the docker-ce CLI, container D, Docker build X plugin for us building and then Docker compose plugin as well. And that's what we're ripping through at the moment to, to get onto our, onto our system. So it should not take too long. He says, 
Okay, so now we should be able to run sudo docker run hello world. Yep, funnily enough, it doesn't have it locally, so we're going to pull down that. And we should just get a very simple hello world. There we go. Um, hello from Docker. This message allows, shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. Okay, good stuff. But we know that actually Docker PS like that is obviously not going to work. So we want to go to this Linux post. And we are going to create the Docker group. And my user should be that. Log out. So let's exit. Let's SSH back in. Oh, I think I've messed that up. That should be good. Okay, good stuff. And then if we go docker ps, looks good. If we go docker run hello, hello world, we should get the same thing. We have the, yeah, there we go. We have the image already downloaded. Okay, so that's the first task done. So from here, we have docker installed. So big tick on there to show our progress on that. Now, the next thing that we want to do is get rid of that one. And we're going to be blinded by the Rancher documentation. So Rancher can be installed in a few different places. Um, in fact, let me go here and I'll show you. So we have um, a few different terminology when it comes to Rancher as well, but where, let me go here, other installation methods. So we can, you can install Rancher within a Kubernetes cluster, or you can do it on a single node Docker installation. Now, again, let me know what you think, because should I be running this in a dedicated Kubernetes cluster with the limited amount of resources that I have, meaning that that, that Kubernetes cluster is going to be up all the time? Or yeah, what should, what should I do? So Rancher can be installed by running a single Docker container. In this installation scenario, you'll install Docker on a single Linux host and then deploy Rancher on your host using a single Docker container. A Docker installation of Rancher is recommended only for de development and testing purposes. Okay, granted, this is a lab environment. It's obviously not going to be production ready. And, and I guess, what, what are we seeing in the field? Are we seeing Rancher being deployed on dedicated infrastructure management type clusters um, to give you that high availability. The ability to migrate Rancher to a high availability cluster depends on the Rancher version. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The Rancher backup operator can be used to migrate Rancher from the single Docker container install, install blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, okay, so requirements for OS, Docker, hardware, and networking. So we provisioned our host. We have that here. Choose an SSL option and install Rancher. For security purposes, SSL is required when using Rancher SSL, secures all Rancher network communication, like when you log in or interact with the cluster. Uh, okay, so use a proxy, configure custom CA. Right, I don't have any of those configured, so a default Rancher self-signed certificate seems like the easy easy button to to run here so what i want to do is i'm going to run it on docker run uh, restart unless stopped on port 80 and port 443 i'm privileged and we're going to use the latest rancher so let's as simple as that so it's not going to be able to find it it's now going to pull that down and I guess we can just go to that address for this machine and get to where we need to go. Let's 
So will that be HTTPS 192.201? It's not going to be there yet, so no point in jumping the gun. Just have a quick look at the requirements. Rancher needs to be installed on a supported Kubernetes version. Da, da, da. Operating systems and container runtimes. Da, da, da. Okay, yeah, we have. Oh, that's different to what we've got. Yeah, we've got plenty. I think we're eight gig of RAM for this small machine. So, but we are running some other other services. So let's head back to installation and upgrade. Now, what I like about Rancher, so I have run it a couple of times, is that it's like the if you notice when we go back to the installation, so this is where we went, we, we chose option A, so a default Rancher generated self signed certificate, home lab again. I haven't got my own certificate, I don't need it. Um, and then you'd expect like next steps is well, ha okay, how do I how do I get into Rancher here? Instead, we look at recommended review single node backup and restore though you don't have any data you need to back up right now we recommend creating a backup after regular rancher use granted okay that might be the first thing but okay how do i get into it which is quite interesting um because at the moment i don't think it says like once the install's done but it doesn't say okay now that default rancher generated self-service certificate blah 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 We've run this. Okay, what does that then mean? Like, do I now? I know that as soon as this is finished extracting, and we're we're back to a prompt, which hopefully any second now, we should be able to hit enter on here, and we should get to our self-signed rancher certificate, and we should be able to um, get going. And what it does on that on that front screen that you'll see shortly is it gives us the ability to go and get our secret from our Docker host and then authenticate into that, create your user, all of that good stuff. Now, there's not that's obviously not documented, but I think that would be it would be useful, especially for people not in that um in that containerized space. This is I find that Rancher and Portainer to that that degree obviously hit hit an easy button when it comes to um, like Kubernetes orchestration in terms of actually building out the cluster, which is exactly why I'm using it here. I, I could go and do it the hard way. I could go and just provision five VMs on this image, like I mentioned. Um, I could go and build a, an Ubuntu 2204 image and do it the hard way, as Kelsey Hightower would say. Um, but where's the fun in that i think ideally what i want these to be which is why i'm considering that here versus that here or there is really because how long does this actually last how long does it stay up for and do i want different templates for different types of clusters because we know that we can run k3s i think there's the rk rke2 as well um there's i could run vSphere tanzu on this cluster for example um i could run openshift now that's not rancher's job obviously to uh to provision those but maybe that's a possibility now it might be too heavy for us to run that in here especially because we're we've got a, a hefty lump here already so that kind of 
might might defeat that object straight away okay we're still extracting which is taking a long time but so far i've not sped up this video at all and maybe we do a separate one for the portainer although it isn't a, a long process Come on, last two. Then we should be good to go on that browser. Okay, so we downloaded the image. Where is my prompt? There it is. So if we just quickly run a Docker PS here, we should see that we have our rancher latest up and our entry point is 443. So let's now try and... Okay, so we have our rancher container up and running here and we've gone to our IP address of this virtual machine, 201 and advanced. And we're gonna proceed safely. Remember we're using a self sign so here we now need to find our uh, not that c copy that so in the logs well that didn't give me anything Oh, <laughs> that would help. Helps if you read. So Docker, and we're going to say this one, and this will output something, hopefully. Bootstrap password, okay, there we go. And pop that in there, log in with local user. Okay, yes allow it yes by checking you accept set a specific password a super secure home lab password okay now let's log back in and with that i think we're good to leave that as is so interest enough it deploys a k3s single note like so basically what we have that that docker container is also a kubernetes cluster and we can do some stuff with that um let's now quickly just install uh, a, create a new volume for that and we're going to create docker run hyphen d hyphen p blah 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 name portainer restart always blah 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 and let's see how we go with that so the idea is is that we've got rancher to deploy our kubernetes clusters so again i'll go into a, another another video around this but i want to use this to create my cloud-based more importantly this vSphere one down here is probably where we where we start things off in a in a video later okay so that has gone so logging in again let's do this first and foremost let's do a https and we're going to 192.169.201.9443. Okay, that was much quicker. Um, new portainer. 
okay and yep create that user and within this now we should be able to see if we go home and we have a look in our local you'll see that we have three images we have the hello world we have the rancher we have the portainer uh, if we go into containers running you can see that these three have been exited the hello worlds and the rancher first attempt and then these two are running so we've got our rancher server that you see here we've got portana that we're in now and we'll again we'll come back to this later on when we uh when we want to cover that